Good morning, January the 28th, 2016. This is CISG 114, Section 1, Web Technology and Life. Today is day number 6 into week number 3. So let's get started. Welcome back. Uh, welcome to day number 6 in this class. First of all, may I just remind you, if you have not done this, I need your living partner's information, and you must put it in week number 2's Dr. Webb's Q&A hotline. Okay, let me just show you the path. You have to come to this link, okay? Click on this link and set up my partner as the discussion thread, and then you need to tell me who your learning partner is. You just need to choose one, okay? I need one partner information from each one of you. Now, if your learning partner has already done this, you must do the same. Okay, and so allow me to come back here to show you the current situation of student pairing. Here we go. Hello. Yes, much better. So, um, Candy, you have not given me the information yet. Wang Chun, you have not given me the information yet. Any congratulations, you're in pair number two. Uh, Z Chuan, you're in pair number six. Um, Fu Ching, you have not given me the information yet. Connie, not given me the information yet. Uh, Jean, Jean, given me the information. You are in pair number four. Uh, Luna, thank you. You are in pair number two. Um, Jessica, hey, you have not given me the information yet. Tammy, congratulations. You are in pair number three. And then um, Francis, not given me the information yet. Uh, Holland, not given me the information yet. And Joanna, congratulations in pair number five. Uh, Peter, not given me the information yet. Um, and then uh, Romina, it's pair number five. Okay, and Jennifer, it's pair number one. Uh, Sheena, you didn't give me the information, not received yet. Uh, Tinho, in pair number four. And then Kao Huan Pen. Is your pair number three? Alex, you're in pair number one. Eason's in pair number six. All right. So make sure you go through this list often enough. I just updated the list about 30 minutes ago. So if you have already given me the information, I'm going to do the update later this afternoon. Now remember, if your name is not here, I cannot set up the pair discussion forum for you. Then you cannot use it. But those of you who have already given me the name, you can use it by this evening, all right? So, thank you very much. I've given you a very important update on your pairing. This is very important because you need your learning partner to help you to complete your first assignment, which is going to be uh, due after next week. But you see, after next week, it's Chinese New Year holiday. Well, you just have to submit it electronically, so there's no boundary. <laughs> okay, so um, let, I'll give you an update on what assignment is next week. That's very uh, last week. Actually, though, it does not take long to do it. Here we go. The second thing I need to tell you is the uh, student sharing for today. Okay, so let me go to the discussion forum for week number two. And then I go to the call for participations link here. Uh, okay, let's see who's going to talk to share with us today on day number six. All right, the first one is Joanna. All right, you ready? Okay, the second one is Ethan. The third one is Tammy. The fourth one is Connie. The fifth one is Zion. Okay, the last one, it's Kevin. All right, but let me see. Any more? Oh, Kevin. Well, first in, first serve, that means we need to go backward, right? So instead of just going top down, we need to go backward. Let's see. We need to go backward, that means, uh, yes, right. So the first one is Luna, okay? The second one is Jennifer. The third is Kevin. The fourth is Candy. Uh, the fifth is Zion. The sixth is Connie. 
because it's the first aid per uh, first aid first serve. All right. So because they sign first, and because of the way they structure this message, they will structure the latest message first. The latest message means the last one to sign up. So we need to give the priority to the first batch. Okay. So for those of you who, have, who do not have a chance to do it because time is up, make sure you're going to sign up immediately next Monday. I'm going to send out the call for participation for next week this afternoon. All right. So are you ready? Luna, are you here? Luna, are you here? Okay. Luna, because she's not here, we cannot give her a chance. Jennifer, are you here? Are you ready? Okay, let's welcome Jennifer. And then, do you need to use computer? Or you just need to talk? Okay, now let me give you the rule. After your sharing in class, you need to come back to this link, do the edit, and type in something about what you share today. All right? Because that is a record. And then if you have a PowerPoint, you also need to attach your PowerPoint here. All right? That is very important because towards the end of the semester, you need the same record to reclaim your score. Okay, I've lost the time to Jennifer. You have five minutes. All right? Two points. 
We also cannot deny that the technology has some disadvantage. Um, for example, most technology develop with the cost of the environmental destruction, and then the sky become gathered and our air is not as fresh as before. Some areas need to go out with the mask. And the second is technology make our life more efficient, but we need to say about is that weather is over efficiency. The when people have something need to say, they just need to pass a message, um, but they require a face-to-face -face communication. And, and this is easier weaken the relationship between people. So in conclusion, um, the technology made our life better is just for most of the time. And we need to use it properly and by uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Jennifer. I think you make a very nice and very neat speech, okay? Uh, with the respect of our speaker, do you have any questions to make sure that you're listening? Now, if you do not have any questions at this point, it's fine, but because that link is always open, you can always reply to Jennifer's sharing by posting your questions there. And Jennifer, I think you are quite willing to respond when you receive questions like this. That is one way for us to encourage discussion-based learning. Now remember, at the end of your sharing, if you could uh, type up what you share in the link over there just by uh, clicking on edit, okay, over there. Then you will have a record, okay? Remember that? Right here, that the way I expect you to do after that is you go back, you click this link, okay? Edit by typing in the topic of discussion today, and if you want, you can print out your speech right here. All right, thank you very much, Jennifer. We welcome your hard work. You look at the notebook, all right? So there's a lot of hard work. So the, the second uh, speaker today is Kevin. Are you here, Kevin? Would you like to share with us right now? Do you need to use your computer to hook it up to the screen, or you just need, okay, and you can put it right here. Thank you. Kevin, so we have five minutes. Now, remember, at the end of your speech, will you please come up here to do edit to type up what you share? All right. Thank you very much. We pass the time to Kevin. As we know, great changes have taken place uh, since the development of technology. And generally speaking, technology has improved our the work efficiency and made our life more. Convenient. However, overuse of the technology also can cause some issues. And the first advantage is uh, we can learn the information without going out. Students can study at home by seeing the teaching video. Adults can work at home through remote control of the internet. People can show me online and can quickly know the most cheap price. Uh, besides, with the development of printing technology, 3D print technology has become more advanced. People can print the clothes, clothes toys, cars, even the houses, uh, which not only save the money but also save the working time. Uh, however, Everything has two sides. Overusing of the technology will cause a physical problem and the degeneration of the personal ability. People tend to bend their hands when scanning a telephone, which will cause the uncomfortable of our cervical vertebra. Over depending on the technology will also make people become more lazy and think less. Think less which probably result people can't live without technological products. So I think uh, technology is making our life better, but people should use it appropriate and intelligent. By doing this, we can achieve the high efficiency. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving us the examples of the 3D printer. It's a very exciting technology. If you went to the TEDx talk last Friday, I guess, at Student Center, 
Okay, the, uh, the actually showed you a video before the talk begins, and they now have the 3D printing of the human organ in this very first prototype. And uh, actually, one patient receiving the product of this a couple of years ago is still surviving. It's very interesting. Thank you, Kevin. Do we have any questions for Kevin? Let's wait one minute. <laughs> any questions? Any questions? Okay, let's carry on with the conversations online with Kevin. All right, so allow me to take a look at this screen. The third person is Candy. Are you here, Candy? Are you ready? Okay, thank you, Candy. The third speaker today is Candy. Allow me to remind you at the end of the sharing, come back and edit the link and type in what you share. Okay, so I'll pass the time to Candy, and then this is the microphone. Hello? Uh, morning, everyone. Uh, the topic is about that I'd like to talk about why web technology is making our lives better. First, the more that I do agree that web technology is making our lives better, although there are problems about the security and the safety. And I just want to focus on the improvements of it, and I just want to ignore the security and the safety for it. So, um, wait. Uh, the first thing is the improvements of tools and machines. Uh, as one of the classmates has talked about, that it's a boom. Uh, it's like a boom that improves these ages and. Like the computers, uh, your phones are pulling and whatever that improves our management to exchange of data. And this is really fully, um, it is really fully improved, in, uh, sorry, increase the convenience that we are living in our lives. The second thing is communications. Uh, we don't have to write long letters and we don't have to be having long delivery times. And this is why, because of technology, so we just can using our fingers to touch them on and then we can send what data is, what files we need to others. And this is really making our lives better. And the third thing is we are being updated every day and every second when you turn on your Facebook or whatever. And then uh, you don't need to go to the airport to find the data or the arrangements for your your plane where you where you are going, and you just need to search online and find the hotels which is better and which is cheaper. And then the last thing is that you can stay close with your friends, no matter you are when you are in Macau or you are in. I don't know uh, other places. You can stay close together because of the social networking, and so that you can share your things every day and keep contact. Uh, sorry. And the last thing is that just as professor has taught us about the teaching methods, that it makes education more fun. Uh, we don't need to just like. Um, like a teacher is teaching every day, and then the student is just listening uh, like that. And then we have more exercise, not just only on the papers, not, not just only the paperwork, and also about the classroom environments because of what you're using about technology. Just here, thank you. Thank you very much, Candy. Uh, let's wait for one minute. Do we have any questions for Candy? It's a very interesting theme. Now, the way Candy would like us to focus on today is on the, on the bright side, right? Uh, she would like us not to think about the security and safety yet. We still can talk about this. On the bright side, it's okay. So anything you can add on or you want to raise an interesting point? That's one minute. Thank you. Yes, peace. Uh -huh. 
Thank you. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing because everyone has their own choice, like taking photos of other food or um, when I'm talking to you or I just want to take off my phone and just update for something or like. Uh, but one thing is that it is about your self control. If you want to, that means if your friend is. Uh, very important for you, like uh, the gather is very important. So I think if each one of you may be possible to put down your phone and talk together, it's about your self control, not because of the technology improvements. Yeah. Yes, I think it's a very up to the point answer. Now, may I encourage you, not just the gentleman over there, if you have any question you want to pose, well, uh, for the convenience of Candy to answer and for the discussions of the class, go to the link over there with Candy's link and press reply and type up your concerns, all right? By doing that, we could gather a lot of ideas, all right? That's the way we want to galvanize the discussion. And I thank you very much for students coming up with questions at the end of the speech, all right? Thank you, Candy. Um, that is what we're getting into. Now, may I... Let's take a look at uh, the next speaker. Uh, that is Sian. Are you here? Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So I will pass five minutes to you. I was to understand. Remember, at the end of that, click edit and type the topic of the share. All right. Thank you, Sian. Please pick up the microphone. Yes. Inquiry-based learning, yes. In a traditional class, teaching lectures of as knowledge, knowledge and the students are required to study the language, which is part and example of human learners. However, there is a new educational style holding the traditional learning. It is called uh, inquiry-based class of inquiry-based learning, which was acts as a facilitator to lead students to think of valuable questions and uh, construct their work knowledge. Um, instead of directly presenting a thought and facts, which brings up the question as the topic of class and the students direct their hypotheticals to get the possible answer. And that a research scheme should be carefully developed, which designed to test their assumption. Uh, next, they need to collect the information and the analyze system. The data will be collected through, um, through observation, interviews, library researchers, and uh, internet researchers. And the the result of data collection should be accessible to everyone in the same class. Furthermore, the analysis, which means deeply thinking and a clear reason, reasoning over, over the information and the 
relationship to know to identify whether the hypothesis is true or false, and they want to the truth to answer it. That's what I'm not listening. We present the research results and the discuss with classmates for power understanding. All these requires step by step guide and instruction from each instruction class. Students could learn a lot more than knowledge. Students just learn their ability of solving problems by themselves, which will be essential to their further development. Inquiry based learning is more efficient than traditional learning because we make students actively involving and engaging in the discovery process rather than passively accepting teachers' words. Also, it can improve uh, students' communication through group, uh, group collaboration and uh, presentation. Uh, the small, it could be as enjoyable as a uh, game and uh, students will experience the joy of creation and achievement. That's all I would, I would like to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sian. Um, first of all, thank you for your sharing on IBL inquiry-based learning as we listen to your um, spelling out those very important process. We understand that you put a lot of thinking into it. Now, let's wait one minute. Do we, do we have any questions for Sian? Remember, you can always go back to Sian by going to this link over there by clicking reply and if you have anything you want to ask sign on the portions of his sharing today you're very much welcome now one thing I would like to suggest because it's a very good opportunity for you to practice your public speaking when you come up here and one important thing that you need to know it's if you have a lot of things to say what you need to do is to make it clear uh, or start with the keyword and then share your thought by going to the specific concept associated with the keyword and then go one after the other. Do not be too ambitious to cover many things within a small amount of time. You do not need to do that, remember that. So because by learning something, you need to try to put things into practice. We thank you, Sian. Well, thank you very much for your sharing today. Uh, we want to listen to you one, uh, again um, in the coming weeks. So the next speaker, Connie, are you here? Thank you. Are you ready? Thank you very much. Let me pass the microphone to you by turning it on. All right? So, five minutes.
this uh, will be a very important thing that we uh, need to think uh, more deeply uh, when we use the word technology. The, the second thing will be uh, because uh, we, uh, we, uh, we usually use the word technology like the typing of the test to uh, the artist people, uh, the communication become more convenient. But in some regions, uh, so that uh, because we are just only type the uh, words, uh, some of the teenagers didn't. Uh, notice what is the correct step of writing the Chinese. I think this will be also a uh, uh, very important uh, thing uh, besides the, um, the, uh, the, the other problem like um, just focus on uh, the mobile phone and mass communication with each other. Uh, this may be, uh, like can we say, this may be uh, the self-discipline of that person. But I think, um, uh, yes, self-discipline may be uh, one kind of uh, reason to, uh, to, um, to just, uh, yeah, to, <laughs> to say it, uh, uh, to, to give a reason for uh, actually work technology is good, but uh, we also cannot uh, ignore the disadvantage of it break us. And just uh, everything have their uh, have two sides. Uh, we need to think more and be careful in using this. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Connie. So uh, we've heard um, your fellow students sharing. So let's uh, go to one minute. Thank you. Do we have any questions for Connie based on the sharing so far? Of course, we can extend it through the online discussion forum. Do you have any quick thoughts to want to add to the richness of it? Okay, thank you. Anyway, the question is said to help us to put things in perspective. Thank you, Colin. So, one more. Uh, let's say, Tammy. Are you ready, Tammy? Okay, you have five minutes time. Google, Yahoo, those 
Bay's website, and you can easily find tons of results, whether it is actually related or not, you just find a lot. And sometimes it's quite helpful, like uh, if you want to do some research for your homework, you can actually just go to Wiki and find uh, any kind of information you want. It's very easy. But in the past, you may need to spend lots of time on stay in the library to find the book you want and you have to read the whole book and this uh, the web technology just kind of makes us um, uh, to assess information more easily and uh, also um, it kind of change our lifestyle like for example like is quite popular among us. Uh, the, the social function uh, in the internet, like there are many uh, social, uh, what is that called? Something like Facebook, Twitter, uh, uh, you can use like WeChat and phone, uh, WhatsApp, all those stuff. You can, um, you can meet new people, like uh, big friendly kind of people, like from even from foreign countries, you don't know them, but you just kind of uh, texting, typing, just sending a message to each other and you know, make new friends. It's very easy. But in the past, it's like really impossible. You can't just stay here and try to uh, you have to stay here and you have to, you have to, have to uh, move to another place to meet the people there. You cannot just stay here and uh, make contact with people all around the world at the same time. It's nearly impossible. So uh, it's kind of convenient for now. But in some situations, uh, like Like the overusing is kind of confusing. Like sometimes my mom just, I don't know why she did that. I just sit next to her and somehow she just you know, try to text me. I don't know why. I just ask her, so why are you doing this? And she said, Yeah, because you always look at the phone. So she tried to text uh, with me. So it's kind of strange. Like, uh, when you have new things and there are certain kind of good part of it, like there are some beneficial uh, things for us, but at the same time we might not uh, realize that in the beginning, but now we uh, start to realize there are also certain kind of problems, and which is coming you know, uh, and you start to realize, you don't realize that it exists like um, in the first week or second week uh, we saw, um, we watched a video about the, the kind of new technology of fraud and scamming uh, by hacking or all kind of stuff. They are also related to web technology, but this kind of problems doesn't, didn't exist uh, in the past. So is web technology actually making our life better or not? Um, is, I don't have a clear answer, but I believe uh, we can look into a positive way, like we can uh, face these problems and we might uh, have uh, better solutions for these problems in the future. I think it's very good. It's full of uh, thinking points, we call it. Thank you very much, Tammy. Now, um, we're going to have at least one minute's time for us to think together and maybe we can ask some questions uh, for Tammy to comment on. So, let's uh, just take it for 60 seconds. Uh, put some thinking into the examples given by Tammy 
And I, I believe Tammy would be very glad to um, elaborate a little bit more on those. The most important things, do you have uh, any ideas to add to the richness of the sharing? Now allow me to remind all of you who have shared today, at the end of your sharings today, please go to the, the same signs over there where you sign up, and make sure you click on the edit link, okay? And type in what you share today, all right? Click the edit and type in what you share today, all right? Um, if you cannot find the edit link, let me know, all right? You can always come back in. Really? Let me let me just make sure that uh, this is generally the. Oh yeah, yeah. So just the next time. Yeah, yeah. Terribly sorry for that. <laughs> Do you see the point? Yeah. Actually, uh, I made a mistake, right? So I thought that the, the, the one to, um, who came at first or pushed to the, to the bottom, but Joanna made it clear. So are we going to reward Joanna by giving her a chance to talk? It's okay, this is the best time. You can sign yeah. up first. All right, thank you very much. You, you, you did an excellent one. Mm -hmm. As a teacher, sometimes we got things reversed, right? So many eyes. Okay. All right, so with the gracious um, um, clarifications here, that make sure that your point is up. Sir, you have a good intentions, but you act in the opposite way. All right. All right, so allow me to give you uh, get back to the class today first. All right, so we're going to uh, help you to understand the important topics of the digital divide. All right, so digital divide is a very interesting concept. Um, it's a concept that we live with, but uh, we have to accept that it's fact of life today. Okay, digital divide in the 21st century. First of all, you have to understand what is meant by divide. Divide here means it's a lie which divides those who have something and from those who do not have anything. All right, it's the have and the have not. But in this particular case of a digital divide, that means we are living in a world where people are normally considered as those who have the knowledge to use the computer with the access of the internet, and those who do not have the knowledge and those who don't even have any facilities to use access to computer, not even have computer or internet access. Alright, an example is, okay, let me use Hong Kong as an, as an example. Hong Kong is considered as a relatively uh, rich area where education is relatively free, although it's not 15 years of free as in Macau. Uh, and in Hong Kong today, many schools have offered online learning, something like Moodle environment, where teachers use a lot of online resources to help children learn, students learn. And basically, they are practicing the kind of learning model called a flipped classroom model. What it means is, teacher will prepare all the teaching material, and so the students will have to learn the easy part at home. And the way to learn it is to go to the computer, uh, get access to the school's website, uh, go to a Moodle environment like this, watch the video, the teacher is going to re record, so that uh, when you watch 10 to 15 minutes of video every day, you're learning the easy part. So when you go back to school, you are asking questions, because you should have master knowledge at home, and when you come to school, you will be given an exercise to do. We flip the model. In the past, we come to the classroom to learn something, and then we assign homework for you to do at home. But what if you do not know how to do it at home? You have to come back to school and ask the teacher the next day, or you use the email to ask the teacher. Now, the question is, so much better if we reverse the model so that we prepare everything student is going to learn the easy part at home, what we call the foundational material, and when they come to class, they try to apply what they learn to solve problem. So whenever they have difficulty to solve the problem, they will discuss with their partners and they will ask the teacher directly in class. Now, this is a very good learning model. Yet, in Hong Kong, many students 
because the family predicted that could not afford to buy at least one computer. And if they have a computer, sometimes they cannot afford to have the internet access. And this is an example of a digital divide that exists in a rich area in Hong Kong. And five years ago, it's estimated up to, not five years ago, ten years ago, it's estimated up to 23% of the school kids uh, who come to school regularly in Hong Kong do not have the computer access at home. And so the Hong Kong government uh, had this idea to bridge, to bridge the digital divide gap for the, for the kids and also for the elderly, but I'm focusing on the kids. They set up um, non-profit making organizations uh, naturally they call it the social enterprise. I'm going to explain to you later. The social enterprise here is called Web Organic. Okay, uh, we really exists. And it was won by people with a good intent since they helped bridge the digital divide gap so that kids with a family who couldn't afford to buy a computer and go intellect online at home will be able to do it at the minimum cost of only $100 per month. Okay, if you, you can afford $100 per month, we'll give you the latest computer. Uh, uh, perhaps iPad Professional. And then we'll give you free, not actually free internet access. Internet access with unlimited amount of time. In Hong Kong, it's much, much quicker than in Macau. And how do they make it? Well, but definitely the, the government has to sponsor this, okay, so that those family which is categorized below the poverty line, Hong Kong near the poverty line, will be able to apply for this for the kids as long as they're willing to pay $100 per month. So with $100 per month, most of the family can afford that. Yet the next question is, now that the kids has the computer and internet access at home, what if the kids do not know how to use the computer and do not know how to use the internet access like Google this or Google that? And so, the web organizations organization thought about this and they came up with a very brilliant idea. What if we need the help of volunteers, particularly the university students? Uh, so they set up a call for volunteer tutor. And so they recruit university students all over Hong Kong from the eight institutions of high education. And so if it happens in Macau, you can also register. And you register, and each student registered to volunteer to help for those kids who do not know how to use computer, using their computer resources, will be given a chance to do it three hours a week. Okay? And then if you sign up for three hours a week, you will be assigned to a family in one specific location of Hong Kong. And you will take your time, okay, because your time you have to go to school and maybe during the evening, 9 to 10, or maybe uh, from 8 to 9. And then you go to that specific house and help the kid to learn with the resources sponsored by the organic and also paid by the family. And the kids will have a free of charge tutor, and you, as a university student, can help use the knowledge that brings the digital by gap. Okay, so I've given you a sort condensed version of what I'd like you to know. But anyway, let me let me uh, show you this a little bit further. Okay, extend this project a little bit further beyond Hong Kong, which is done by Hong Kong Polytechnic University in the form of service learning. Now, at the University of Macau, in over the past year, we do have. And we did have recognized the importance of this, and so we have a service learning program now, particularly when you're staying in your RC, uh, you will be given information about that. But listen to this. Try to put things together now, okay? Use what I shared with you minutes ago on digital divide and learn from this video what they're doing.
yeah, because a lot of people always serve me. Yeah. And so I think I have a lot of experience about service. I would like to make this world a better place. Like, there are lots of discontent, discord in our world. But by knowing more about each other, by stepping into each other's shoes, that you can really understand their needs, their concerns, what they want, and all this can help make by mutual understanding, you can know more about each other and help making our world a better place, a more peaceful one. If we want to have our younger generation more fruitful and more advancing towards and being more competitive with others, we need to do more. But I like to think of service learning as the closest to a complete education. It poses a great impact on our throughout my life that um, changing my attitude and strengthen my belief in helping others and also staying strong when we have difficulties. After the service, I really pushed the, uh, to continue my thinking about problems and other things uh, for now. Even the service recipients, the impact will be fresh. Yeah. So it's, it's the learning part that the students most benefit from doing those sorts of things, right? Realization, awareness, and self-development. Find more yourself. Service and learning together. When you put uh, academic components into service, and that students um, learn about these academic components um, through giving service to people. Service learning is, is a way to encourage students to really to put their knowledge and practice. So the learning part is the most important. Service learning offers students the unique opportunity to engage with the society and rethink the meaning of their study and their role in society. In this episode, we will follow Dr. Nai, Dr. Chang, and Dr. Wu in the service learning project, in which students visit and teach computing skills to children in Cambodia. Dr. Nai, Dr. Chang, and Dr. Wu will also share with us their experience of teaching service learning subjects and the challenges and rewards that come with it. Service learning is rewarding, but I do have to say it is probably the most challenging thing in terms of teaching. First challenge is from the student level. Um, every, uh, in general, whenever we bring students on these subjects, uh, we always have students whose idea is to go on their SMG holiday and just to play. We find that the reflective essays have been a wonderful way in dealing with them. These days seems a bit messy, but we have, but you guys make me know how to consider it of others and make me know how to cooperate with you guys. The reflection really helped us, and I really want to thank my um, supervisors and also their uh, tutors. Yeah, they really help us because uh, every night we have meetings and all that kind of thing that really help us. And they really do other kind of uh, be flashing with us when we uh, went back to Hong Kong. Giving them a lot of reflection to do, making them really think about what they were learning, um, I think that actually had a very positive impact upon the motivation of our students, um, motivating them to actually put themselves aside and actually serve and try to learn from this experience. So uh, can you share with us about what you have learned? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the past, I was too target-oriented, like what I would like to do, what I would like to achieve. Um, for some of the time, I may be quite reckless towards others' needs, like the service recipient's needs. I may not care too much about their needs, but through this experience, that I learned that it is important for us to step into their shoes, to know more about their abilities, their needs, and to conduct their service projects in a more effective manner. The other challenge that I can think of immediately is in terms of the challenges in terms of knowledge that we are dealing with. Um, one another example also comes from this summer when we actually put together a project that involved bringing our students to this orphanage um, that was a uh, that was serving HIV-AIDS positive orphans. We gave 
a lot of training. We give them a lot of preparation. We had uh, we had doctors come in from Prince of Wales Hospital. We had uh, the orphanage director come in to talk about um, the orphans and so on. They went in there within three seconds. They were with the kids. They were talking with the kids. They were playing with them. They were holding them. And I think that the biggest difference was the amount of preparation that we gave. As one of the preparation activities, students participated in a warm-up service at a local school of special education, in which they visited and played games with a group of mentally challenged kids. At the end of the service, they were given a debriefing by Dr. Nye. Let me just ask a question about okay? Who was not comfortable with the fact
to me about the programming. Yeah, and she, I really learned a lot from her because I remember we revised the programming language because I haven't touched programming for nearly one semester. Yeah. Two of those uh, social projects, they provide the triggers, the catalysts yeah. for students to eager to learn more, and then we can offer them more afterwards. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. I mean, we, we are not saying that all the social learning projects can fulfill all the components of IT professional knowledge. That is not necessary. But that it serves as a way to initiate and motivate our students. Yeah. That is more important. That is the purpose of education. Yeah. What is learning? To use one's intrinsic value to bring out some extrinsic force. That could that is fair to you. That is fair for you, but is essential for us. Service learning can help you find more of yourself. Subjects are probably even forget the subject, even the project itself is probably one of the most demanding things that I've had to deal with. Um, I, I, I think the biggest thing is that it's it's one of the most satisfying things that I've ever ever done. It's one of the most challenging things that I've ever ever done, but it's also one of the most personally satisfying things. Um, to see the students grow, to see how they to, to actually watch them grow over the course of one summer. Uh, while they are working with the projects. I remember one summer where you, you see the student at the beginning of the summer and you see him at the end of the summer and you're like, wow, you know, this kid is like two different people. And then watching them, you know, um, start from being just simply participation to, um, to, to starting to coordinate, to starting to lead and to start to propo uh, propose projects. And um, towards the end of his academic studies, he was actually going out and recruiting new projects that for us. And that is just so completely amazing. And um, I don't know, I mean, uh, in many ways I see our students as, okay, you know, they're not my kids, but they're somebody else's kids. And, you know, uh, I'm sure that his parents will be happy to see him learning something like this. And um, as his teachers, you know, um, it is the duty and the responsibility that, that, that society or our job has placed upon us. But at the same time, it's also just, I mean, what could be more satisfying than actually seeing us make an impact in somebody's life? Something that visible. You know, you could teach like a half a dozen subjects, get a really good SFP, and still not see that. Because the students will not remember you after the subjects. Um, but for the service learning projects, I've never had a student who went on the service learning and they could not remember me afterwards. That's not gonna happen, you know. I think, you know, it is important. Uh, now I'm more convinced that I have that, particularly from uh, academic staff who have never done it before. Uh, yeah, I, I would strongly encourage those staff to take time to come out to one of the service learning course to, to understand and experience what this is all about um, before you get into the planning, before you get into the designing of the course at all. Well, it's a very is not complete. I want you to go home and study a couple of videos here, at least this two, okay? And then try to understand what is meant by digital divide, and then use the piece of surface learning, and use the knowledge you know about your residential college, in particular the surface learning leaders program, University of Macau, and ask this question, what can I as an individual contribute to a good society in the area of digital divide, okay? Using rock, 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 you can do in the brain. It's very important that you don't just study this as a concept. It's a reality, it's a fact line. It happens almost everywhere, even in the richest countries in the world as well. And Hong Kong is an example, and Canada is also an example. And then ask yourself, what can you do about this as an individual? Okay. Well, of course, at the University of Macau, we do offer you ideas of experiential learning throughout your four years in your residential college. And one of this is a program that offers you service learning 
leadership program, or better say, certain leader program. You, in order to lead, you need to learn how to serve. In order to serve, sometimes you need to get your hands and knees dirty. And then in a specific area of this divide, what can you do? This is the question I would like to put forward to you. And one more thing, because last time we have not had enough time to talk about the idea of corporate social responsibility. I would like you to at least look at this. Watch this. What is corporate social responsibility? It's a very wonderful video when helping you to understand what is meant by CSR. Particularly, at the end of this video, you should be able to know seven important points on CSR. Then, also ask yourself this question. What can companies, because we're talking about corporate, companies or organizations like universities do to contribute to a good society in the area of digital divide, all right, by blah, blah, blah. If you try to think about it, in Macau, we have a lot of the casino business, and they are contributing to a lot of the revenues of the Macau government, and also subsequently the people living in Macau. At least you share about that every year, your money put into your pocket, $9,000, $5,000, so what can they do in a much more meaningful way to contribute to a good society in Macau by understanding the seven important points you're going to learn from this video? What is CSR? And of course, in the specific area that I just mentioned, this is All right? So I think that's it for today. Allow me to take attendance, and then I'll let you go. Wow, I'm sorry. It's, um, we need to make the best use of time. Um, okay. Kenny, you're here. Neo, thank you. Annie, thank you. Uh, Z Shen, thank you. Tom, Tom, thank you. Connie, you're here. Uh, Sean, you're here. Luna. Who's not here today? Uh, Jerry, you're here. Tammy, you're here. And then Francis, thank you. Harden, thank you. Joanna, thank you. Uh, Peter, thank you. Romina, thank you. Uh, Jennifer, thank you. Sheena, thank you. Nari, Nari, not here today. Okay. Uh, Kathy, you're here. Alex, thank you. Easy, you're here. Okay, let's save it. Thank you very much for coming back. Forgive me for making a silly mistake today, as to have on up. Uh, let's try to be fair to the other side first and give you my opportunity to share on Monday's class. All right, thank you very much. Do not forget if you have shared today, go back to the link and put in something of what you shared today. All right, it's a very important record. See you next Monday. The week before the Chinese leave this honor. Alright, so thank you. So that's it for today. CISG 114, Section 1, Web Technology and Life, date number 6. See you next week, week number 4.